is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are St. Louis. The Cardinals have gone west. First up, the Angels, who feature stars from both the past and the present. Then, the Dodgers, who are headed for a fourth straight division title, thanks to a mix of established veterans and future All-Stars. The Cardinals are California dreaming, only on Fox Sports Midwest. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball, and tonight begins a seven-game road trip in Southern California. It's game number one of three, the Cardinals and the Los Angeles Angels. Power stats brought to you by Kubota. Albert Pujols is in the lineup tonight for the Angels. He'll serve as the DH. Pujols in St. Louis, 445 home runs. Right behind him in that time period, Jim Edmonds, Scott Rowland, and Ryan Ludwig. And welcome to St. Louis Cardinals baseball. Jim Hayes is here. That's the Cardinals Hall of Famer, Jim Edmonds. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Should be a great test here tonight for Mike Leak, trying to get that first win. Mike Trout is in the lineup. So is Albert Pujols. Should be a good test. Yeah, he hasn't got a chance to get that first win. I know mentally that's something you really got to get under your belt to feel a part of this team. And he's got a great lineup to deal with. Little underachieving team, but you still have Mike Trout and Albert Pujols to deal with tonight. Stay out of a big inning get a win and be happy all right be happy that would be nice be happy Mike Leak get that first win it's our Budweiser what's on tap Mike Leak going for St. Louis it's interleague play the lefty Santiago going for the Angels baseball comes your way next Baseball is brought to you by Bud Light. Please drink responsibly. 
by Chevrolet. Visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealer for great prices on the all-new 2016 Malibu. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Jim Edmonds was telling me before the game, you know what, this is a pretty neat place to play baseball. Look at it. Now you get the view up here. Yeah, this is uh, obviously a pretty special place for me. But um, like I said, when you come here, you don't realize being away from it for so long how beautiful this ballpark is. And it's I always tell people this is one of the nicest places to play uh, as far as the field and the at not the atmosphere, but as far as like just the overall surroundings of the field. It's beautiful to look at. The playing surface is amazing. But of course, playing in St. Louis are second to none. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, covering the bases with tires for superior performance all season long. Goodyear, more driven. Well, as Jim said, during the Open, the Angels are underachieving to an extent. They've had a lot of injuries. Their record stands at 13 and 18, and the Cardinals are even 16 and 16 after a very disappointing homestand. So trying to turn things around here on this road trip. For both teams, I think, obviously, uh, whenever you have a Mike Trout and an Albert Pujols on one side, and then you have the talent that the Cardinals have, uh, you would expect both teams to have better records. But uh, it is early, and it always is early. No time to push any panic buttons. And uh, should be interesting to get a nice look at another American League team out here. And I always thought this was special when you come to interleague was always really great but we don't come here very often i only got to come back here once as a player uh and it's i just think it's a special place it'll be fun for the fans to see a different team too there's mike Sosha hired in november of 1999 longest tenured manager in major league baseball think about this there's been 110 different managers hired since he took over at the helm of the angels and he's considered one of the best in baseball on the other side, you have Mike Matheny, of course, and just to put it in perspective, what Mike Matheny has done in his first four seasons, well, Sosha has four times as many seasons as Mike Matheny as a manager, yet the same number of playoff wins as the Cardinals skipper. So here come the Angels. They'll take to the field as Hector Santiago will have his warm-up tosses and we'll get this underway. Santiago, a lefty that's been very good so far this year, especially at home for the Angels. As I mentioned, it's a team that's been decimated with injuries. The most recent one is Andrelton Simmons, the outstanding shortstop that they picked up from the Atlanta Braves. He's out with a thumb injury. He's going to miss considerable time. So not just with their starting eight, but also in their starting nine when you talk about their pitching staff as well. Simmons joins Garrett Richards, a right-handed pitcher. Left, uh, lefties Andrew Heaney and C.J. Wilson, they're on the DL. The closer, Houston Street, out until late May with a left oblique strain. And Tyler Skaggs is currently shut down during his Tommy John rehab with tendonitis. So this has been a team that's gotten hit hard by the injury bug. Yeah, and it seems like every year something happens to this team. and Always expect them to be right there at the end. Yeah. but. Just so many injuries, and you know how that goes. We have plenty of injuries in St. Louis, so uh, it's one of those things you just have to fight through. A look at the Cardinals lineup tonight with Matt Carpenter as your leadoff man. His average has risen now to 256. He's starting to swing the bat very well. Then Steven Piscotti, one of the hottest hitters in the game. Matt Holliday will serve as the DH. Randall Grichik in center field, the former Angel. Then Yadier Molina, Brandon Moss, Jed Jerko, Jeremy Hazelbaker and batting ninth. Well, he could be considered the best hitter in this lineup so far, and that's a lead miss Diaz. He'll bat ninth for the Cardinals. So Carpenter overall batting 256 with four home runs. He's driven in 19. The Cardinals lead all of baseball in slugging percentage and in runs scored. 67 degrees our game time temperature here on the west coast we talked about it in san diego the ball will not travel as well late at night on the west coast and it's one ball one strike speaking of not traveling well we talked about this in san diego you get a false sense of security because when the sun's out i believe it was 80 degrees when i was driving here today and then as soon as the sun goes behind the stadium 
A little bit of a marine layer pops in here, and the ball just stops carrying. So it'll be interesting to see tonight some of the looks on the guys' faces, you know, when they hit a ball good and see where it ends up. Hector Santiago is 2-1 and one this year. His last start, he took a no decision against the Brewers. Three runs in five and a third. And at home, as I mentioned, he's been very good. Going back to last season, his last five home starts, Angels have won all those games, and he's 2-0. and Carpenter drives it down the right field line. It's hooking, and it is gone. It's a home run. Lead-off homer, Matt Carpenter. His fifth of the year, and it's one to nothing. St. Louis, what a way to start this road trip. That one carried. Yeah. <laughs> that is a line, line drive ball in off the plate a little bit. Just hit a missile into the seats. It's that low wall, too, that's in right and in left before it jets out near the bullpen. And so it sneaks over the wall, barely stays fair, and the Cardinals have a 1-0 lead. Here's Steven Piscotti. 103 miles an hour off the bat of Matt Carpenter. Jimmy, when you watch Steven Piscotti, you don't see the prolonged slumps. Now, granted, it's early in his major league career, but he seems to figure things out a little quicker than most. Well, I think the thing that he does so well is he doesn't move around a whole lot. You know, you, you would kind of look at him kind of like you'd look at Matt Carpenter where really comfortable at the plate, really soft feet, uh, not a whole lot of movement. And so he sees the ball better than most. Or And that's the key is the longer you see the ball, the more still your head is, the more things that you can adjust to. And obviously one of the biggest keys to being a good hitter is to not swing at balls. He does a pretty good job at that. Two balls, two strikes. His last seven games hitting 448 with six driven in. Ooh, he was on that pitch and fouled it back. They say here in Anaheim they are going to draw over three million fans, but uh, it seems like we have a lot of fans disguised as seats tonight. <laughs> I was going to say, they're going to get a late start on, <laughs> on the three million. <laughs> The 2-2 two -two is taken in the dirt. You know what's funny is uh, when you're playing in St. Louis, you can definitely tell when school's in and school's out. Oh, yeah. It's even more obvious here. I mean, when the kids are in school here, the fans have a little bit tougher time coming out. 3-2 is popped up. Soto, playable in foul territory, makes the play for the out. And it brings in Matt Holliday. <laughs> Dobbs tire and auto centers defense. Daniel Nava is in left. Trout in center. Calhoun is in right. Escobar, Pennington, Giovatella, and Crone at first on the right side of the infield and the former Cub behind the plate, Giovanni Soto. Matt Holliday, this is the 25th game he's been a designated hitter. A 213 average when he's the DH. Do you find that it was hard to do this, to be a DH, as opposed to being a, a guy that's out there for all nine innings? I didn't think it was hard. It, it just is different. And you kind of lose track of what's going on, and it's kind of a lot of sitting. I did like to play defense, so I, I'd rather be out there. It, it's nice, though. Once in a while, get a day off when you play every day. So it, it's kind of it's weird because it's hit and miss. Popped up again on the infield. Johnny Giavatella. Seems like you don't want to mess with a guy that has that kind of name. <laughs> Might have some friends in the back corner, you know. You got to watch out. Gia Vitell is here. Hector Santiago, the Hyundai pitch arsenal, primarily the fastball, the sinker, and also goes with the changeup, and that's what he's got Piscotti and Holiday out on. As he got those two to pop it up, and now it's Randall Gritchett. You actually called Randall the other day. Yeah, just trying to check in on him. Time to time you do that with the guys that you get closer to. It's it's one of those things, I think, in any profession, in any job, your job, my job, field, on the field, off the field. I think when someone's been there and done what you did or doing and gone through what you're going through, it's always nice to maybe hear something from someone like that. And 
And it wasn't just like, hey, I know what it's like to struggle. I said, I know what it's like to have those expectations. And that's a big key, too, to how to kind of hone those in and, and don't get caught up in it. They've got a shift on here for Gritchick. You really hit on a key point, too, because this time last year, he's scrapping, trying to find at bats, break into that lineup. And now he comes into this season, he's expected to be a cleanup hitter and an everyday center fielder. And that, and that kind of happened to me here in Anaheim, I think, uh, in spring training. When they traded Chad Curtis, Marcel Latchman walked up to me and he said, hey, it's your job. Go ahead. You're the center fielder every day. And I struggled. Yeah. And he kept coming up to me and saying, doesn't matter what happens. You keep playing defense, you're going to keep playing every night. So, like I said, I've been there where he's been, and I just thought it would be interesting to talk to him and see what's going on in his head. Well, that's been good to see. The walks for Gritchick, that's number 12 this year. On Saturday, he had a three RBI day, so slowly but surely you're seeing some signs for him to break out of it. Here's Yadier Molina, and those two are very close, Molina and Soto. Soto has worked with Benji and Jose Molina, and Jose is the new catching coordinator here with the Angels. But those two, both are 33. They played against each other and with each other since the age of 14 in Puerto Rico and still are very, very close. And Soto credits Molina for helping him in terms of momentum going towards second base on trying to catch base stealers. And it was an off season a few years ago, and since that time, his numbers in catching those stolen base attempts are very, very good. Gio was there in Chicago when I was there. I loved him. He was a great teammate. He spoke very highly of all the Molina brothers. It's taken just a bit high, and it's one ball and one strike. Molina hitting 309, no home runs, and he's driven in 12. The 1 1 pitch. Instead, a check on Richick, who's back in safely. Randall, two stolen bases this year. Santiago started with the White Sox, then was traded to the Angels. This is an Angels team that their starters, they're just trying to gain traction here in the first five to six weeks. As a team, they've lost seven of their last nine. They were just swept over the weekend by Tampa Bay. And the starters are an issue. During that time, the last nine games, they've combined to go 0-6 with a 7.5 ERA. Yeah, that's one of been their one spot that always ends up hurting you is get that pitching to be consistent, obviously. But even with a great lineup, if you don't keep the other team from scoring, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a tough one. And it's you, you know you look at the numbers and it's unlike a Mike Sosha team that's been based here in Los Angeles with very good pitching and kind of that National League style of baseball with bunting and stolen bases. They don't do a lot of that either. Yeah, I think they've kind of gotten away from that a little bit and I think that was why they were so successful early in the early 2000s um, when guys like Eckstein and that kind of a group that was here was scrappy and they had the Spezio and you know just the guys that just roll guys that were just really good at doing their job and I think that you know you bring Albert in and you get Trout and it kind of does change the complexion of the, the team even though you're bringing in two of the better players in the league. So Molina draws the second walk here in the uh, top of the first. And it brings in Brandon Moss. So back-to-back -back walks. It started with a home run by Carpenter. And we saw Piscotti and Holiday pop out. Richick the walk. Molina a walk. And already our first visit with Santiago. The Cardinals against sub-500 teams this year. And I, I'm not a big run differential guy. I mean, I think it does tell some of the story. But against sub-500 teams, they're 11-5. and five. The run differential is plus 57. When you look at when they take on teams 500 or above, the record is 5-11, and 11, minus 17, the run differential. So that does tell part of the story here. Well, and you know why those teams are below and above usually is pitching. Yep. And obviously... When you're playing the better teams that they're stacked with pitching, it's going to make it tougher for you to go out there and score runs, and that's when the little game of bunting, hitting and, hitting and running, 
and doing those things are so important. But uh, as to be expected, the, the better teams are going to have the pitching and definitely going to give you fits. That pitch in the dirt to Brandon Moss, who's hitting 221. Seven home runs to lead the club. He's driven in 19. And Moss hits a high fly ball, lifted into deep right field. Calhoun back with room and puts it away. Boy, he just missed that. The Cardinals, though, do pick up a home run. Matt Carpenter, his fifth of the season. Nice way to start the trip. one nothing after a half inning. Earlier today, he arrived at the ballpark about five minutes before our open. He was tanning, making sure he got the uh, proper sunshine that he needs on a daily basis. That's just a little south of me right there. That would be Laguna Beach, I Laguna believe. Laguna Beach. So there is Mike Leak, who wears number eight. And here's a look at the lineup that he'll face. Yanel Escobar, followed by Cole Calhoun, Mike Trout, Albert Pujols, Daniel Nava, switch hitter, C.J. Crone, Johnny Giavotella. Giovanni Soto and the switch hitting shortstop Cliff Pennington. So Mike is trying to get on track here this season and it's been the big inning that has cost him and that's what happened in his last start. That was against the Phillies. Took a no decision against the Phillies. Five innings, four hits, four runs. At one point set down 10 straight, the first 10 he saw. And then it was a three run homer by Ryan Howard. You put a premium on defense when Mike Leake is on the mound because of all the ground balls he can get. This is Yunel Escobar, and it's two balls and no strikes. And also, I think, Jim, I mean, you're, you're trying to get used to a new catcher, new surroundings, new team. You just got $80 million, so there's pressure with that. All those things are factors into why maybe a player struggles. And a lot of it's mental. A lot of it's trying to do a little bit too much, trying to make the perfect pitch at the at the perfect time. And when you try hard in this game, sometimes it backfires. If you miss in the strike zone by an inch or two, sometimes it ends up on the other side of the fence. Escobar lines it into right field for a leadoff base hit. Let's take a look at the Cardinals defense. Around the horn, presented by Dobbs Tired Auto Centers. Hazel Banker, Gritchick, and Piscotti in the outfield. Carpenter, Diaz, Jerko, and Moss on the infield. Molina behind the plate. Leak on the mound. The Cardinals with 26 errors this year, which is tied for the most with Milwaukee. The number two spot in this lineup has been a real issue for the Angels this year. Their number two hitters 
are only batting 220 with an on-base percentage under 300. So when you think about Trout and Pujols and that firepower three and four, if there's nobody to drive in, the numbers will be down. And that's so unusual to me when I see these stats with a situation where one spot in the order is not doing well. And you look at, uh, you throw whoever you throw out there. You know, you see um, like a guy like Calhoun out there, he's hitting 295. So when, it, when he's hitting second, is he, you know, not doing, you know, you start pushing guys up and down the lineup and you're fishing. And sometimes that's the key to not having a very cohesive unit is when you always have to change people around because you're trying to find the lineup that works. It's tough. The Cardinals have a shift on here. Carpenter on the second base side. The third baseman. Diaz is in a few steps. It's short. And it's one ball and one strike. It's a shallow shift. You don't see. Usually you see one guy in the outfield. Guys can run a little bit. You can't play as deep. There's only been 12 stolen base attempts this year against Yadier Molina. He's caught five. 1-1 one, one pitch. Two balls and one strike. It's hard to believe this is the 20th season of interleague play. Already 20 years. I was saying everyone, I thought it was great. Started doing it, just chance to go see some new teams and new stadiums and just do something different. Runner goes and a broken bat foul. And also Calhoun lost it to be a thumb guard on that swing. Last eight games, he's hitting 400, so Mike Sosha has moved him up in this lineup. That would be a broken thumb guard foul, <laughs> not a broken bat foul. Do you enjoy coming to these ballparks? Love it. Isn't it great? Yeah, just seeing a new stadium. Also, a different style of play, too. You know, when you've got the DH that's being used here tonight. As Calhoun swings and misses, it strikes out. Monday pitch, Arsenal 4, Mike Lee. We know about that very good sinker, which reduces all the ground balls. His fastball is around 89 to 91, 92. Nothing. It's overly hard, but it's about location and sync when you think about Mike Lee. Well, and that's the problem when a guy like Mike is off with his location because of just the 90 mile an hour, 91 mile an hour fastball. With the amount of velocity that's in the league these days, you're going to be the guy who's going to take the, the brunt of the beating. I mean, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's probably tougher for him now than it was when he broke in. A little bit more velocity, but yet everyone's used to seeing so much. It's like... If you miss at 90, those guys are licking their chops. Sure. So he's used to being with pinpoint control, and when you don't have it, it causes problems. Is he the game's best player? Mike Trout is at the plate. Through his age 23 season, which was last year, you could make a case that nobody has been better ever in the history of baseball. Four silver sluggers, MVP, Youngest player to reach 100 home runs and 100 steals. And runner up two or three times? Three. That's amazing. At, we were at the golf tournament yesterday with Albert and uh, was talking to somebody for the Angels. And we were, Mike and I were talking, and then he walked away, and I said, it's almost unfair that a guy that big can be that talented and run that fast. Here's a 1-1. Hits sharply in the left center field. Escobar will stop at second base. And now it's Albert Pujols. Slow start for Pujols in that average department at 190. Six homers, he's driven in 18, a couple of doubles. If he homers against the Cardinals, he'll be one of nine active players to homer against every team in baseball. Surprised he hasn't hit a home run against the Cardinals yet. Only three games against St. Louis. That's all, that's all it's been. That's yep. okay. Well, that. He is one for 11 against the Cardinals. 
Now what you're thinking here with pool holes if you're Mike Leak, sinker, ground ball, double play. Three games isn't enough <laughs> with him. Huh. Here's an 0 1 pitch to Pools. Now, speaking of double plays, that is the only category he's led the league in while wearing an Angels uniform. Grounding into double plays. He did that back in 2014. He had 28 of those. Here's a 1-1. I think the thing with Albert, too, is the reason why he is so good is he swings the bat. He's aggressive. He can hit pitches that most people can't. But that's also why he grounds into so many double plays. And a lot of those times I was standing behind him with guys in scoring position, and he's going out there to try to drive in the runs. It's what he's paid to do. It's what he does best. And sometimes that gets you into a situation where you're swinging at pitches that you probably shouldn't. Matt Holliday's the same way. That's his job. His, his job is to go out there and drive in runs. On one and two, he flies to right field. There's Piscotti, who, by the way, was picked up as a loss of Albert Pools. The Cardinals had two compensatory picks for the loss of Albert Pools. Two they turned into Stephen Piscotti and Michael Walker. And they did pay him $250 million. It's not a bad... Uh, it's not a bad gig right there. Not a bad trade off. Huh? Not a bad trade. A few trips to the postseason. A few more options to play with with the extra money. I think you make a case that Alan Craig, who was with the Cardinals at the time, signed an extension. Yadier Molina, Adam Wainwright, they both signed extensions. If you sign pools, that probably doesn't happen with one of your cornerstone players. One of them probably leaves. There's Daniel Nava, a switch hitter. He's hitting 217, no home runs, and he's driven in one this year. And that's a, something you can talk about. We can talk about that for nine innings. Sure. The people that they kept and the things they've done because of it. Wow, what a play, Aledmus Diaz. Deep in the hole, ranging to his right, and an off-balance throw. Showed off the arm there. That's a heck of a play from the rookie shortstop, Aledmus Diaz. He's playing near the bag at second, quickly out of the glove, and a strong throw to Brandon Moss. Here's Jed Jerko, first pitch, hit down the left field line and foul.
barely. <laughs> I was going to say, not by much. That's when you're playing and you're looking back and you're like, <laughs> you're just waiting for them to change it. Like, I need that. Well, they do have replay now to go back and look at it. You don't have chalk going down the line, by the way. That is painted into the grass, so it doesn't come flying up. Looks to be a good call. Problem with that is you're running down the line and you can't really look back. But yet when you're leaving the box, you're thinking, oh, sure, it's going to drop. It's going to drop. And then you're running around the bases and they tell you to go back. That's one of those things you don't want to hear. Sinking liner drops in for a base hit right in front of Daniel Nava. Jimmy, how about this play from Aledmus Diaz showing off the arm? You know, it's been great to watch him play early this year already. I mean, he's going way to his right, off balance, strong arm, and throws the ball right on the money. That's a tough play. He's been doing a lot of things right, and it's been fun to watch him kind of just get settled into the situation what he's been pushed into. And he's getting better defensively, and maybe it's a byproduct of the offense and also just he's comfortable. As Hazelbaker looks to drop down a bunt in front of a ninth place hitter. So there's a situation here that you normally wouldn't see in the National League style of game. But tonight, the man leading the world in slugging percentage is batting ninth, and that's a lead Miss Diaz. Yeah, you don't see that very often no. either. But uh, yeah, like you said, he's getting comfortable. He's playing, I think, too, when you get to the finally get through spring training, you're playing on better fields, better footing, and better scouting reports. You get more comfortable with the guys that are pitching in front of you. There's a lot of things that can happen really quick when you get to go out there every night. You could see where Hector Santiago would be tough on a lefty. Look at where he lands. Almost throws across his body and makes it very tough on a left-handed batter. The good thing about that is the velocity. And we talk about this. I'll talk about this all year long. But velocity is everything to a hitter. When a guy's throwing see a slider there 78 miles an hour 85 87 you can handle that if the guy was stepping across his body right there like Randy Johnson and throwing 96 that's you might want to come you, that's when you limp into the locker room <laughs> and you say something a happened sore. <laughs> a little <laughs> sore today <laughs> I think I might just you know maybe one day just get my legs better <laughs> here's a one two slapped foul and out of play so Diaz, Hazel Baker, Bowman, all have been pleasant surprises here for the Cardinals early on. It's one of the things I was talking to Mabes today before the game about hitting is just like you get guys that young guys that they go out there and you can tell them, hey, this guy's going to do this and this is what you need to look for. That doesn't need that doesn't mean you need to hit it. You need to be able to recognize and take advantage of the situation. Just because he's throwing you a slider doesn't mean swinging a slider. You know a slider's coming, you're, you're amped up for it, and then he throws you a bad slider and you can't hold up. So it's all part of the challenge of being young and hitting is take all the information that you have and do something with it, not just go out there and be on autopilot swing just because he's throwing something. I had a fan ask me the other day to ask you, so I'll do it. Are you ready for this question? I hope I can handle it. It's an easy one, I think. We'll do it after this 2 2. He said, uh, Ask Jimmy if players look daily at stats. We know they look daily at video and scouting reports, but do they look at the stats? Some guys do, some guys don't. There's, And you know who it is because they always have the stats in their hand. But uh, I never looked at the stats. The thing is, you always see them on the board every day. I mean, actually, you probably don't see your stats as much because I try not to look up there, but you know where you're at. But no, I mean, there's guys definitely in the locker room that are always looking at the stat sheet, see where they're at, and then there's guys that don't care. It's a pretty good at bat here by Jeremy Hazelbaker, three and two. Hazelbaker has struck out 26 times. You don't have a real speedy runner at first in Jerko. I'm not sure that Mike wants to start the runner here. Probably not with the lefty on the mound. Yeah. But you never know. He's got the nine hitter on. Right. <laughs> Your nine hitter that could be batting cleanup or leadoff. It's a good problem to have. I'd say so. Outfield is straight away. 
The check on Jerko. The 3 2 pitch, not running, and it's a grounder. That is a foul ball. Every once in a while, Hazel Baker really catches your eye with just how short his swing is. You know, sometimes it's a short swing with opposite field power, and in this case, short swing, able to turn on the ball. Talking to Gary DeSarcina, which was my shortstop when I played for the Angels, was now their third base coach. He had him for a whole year, I think maybe two years ago. And he said he had all the tools, but he had just never really figured out what he needed to do with everything that he has. Is he going to be a speedy guy? Is he going to be a power guy? Is he going to be? And I think he struggled with trying to figure out which ones, you know, which one to play with that day. And a strikeout of Hazel Baker, a late call by Carlos Torres, the home plate umpire. Missouri Lottery Fox tracks as we'll take a look at the call third strike. So one out, and here's Aledmis Diaz. Nine strikeouts for Diaz this year. And 17 extra base hits. Now think about that for a rookie who also is leading the league in slugging percentage at 688. Leads the league in hitting against right-handed pitching well above 400. And on the road, he's hitting over 500. <laughs> Numbers have been incredible this year. Settled in quickly, huh? Yes. You know what I, I noticed, just even just watching this right here? It just it seems like he's just under control. You know, we talk about that at the plate is being able to recognize pitches. He's got a good short swing, so he doesn't have to cheat. He's got plenty of power, which allows you not to have to cheat. And he just is looks, I mean, I hate to say the word comfortable because if another team is listening to this, which I'm sure there's no one in the world listening to me and you right now, um, you say Boy, comfortable too much and you think people are like, um, you know, being maybe a little bit like he's too comfortable. And that's the thing that the like other teams say, oh, we got to throw with this guy because he's got to move his feet because he's too comfortable. And that, I don't want to make it seem like he's so comfortable to play. It just looks like he's under control is a, probably a better word to say. But. Um, he looks comfortable as far as playing in the big leagues and, and doing his job. Only nine strikeouts, and that's part of that of what you're talking about. Comfortable seeing the ball, not overmatched. The 2-1 is ripped into left center field. That ball gets to the wall. Jerko on his way to third. They'll wave him in. Relay to the plate. It's cut off, and Diaz is in a rundown. No one at the bag at second. And finally, they will tag him out. If they let that ball go through, they may have had a chance to get Jed Jerko. Instead, it's cut off, and it's 2 to nothing, St. Louis. And it's another double for Diaz. That's number 12, and he's in the top four in doubles. You can see the power. He's got short swing. Right on the barrel, and the ball just jumps off his bat. It's a long run for Jerko. <laughs> I think he was begging Chris Maloney to hold him up. <laughs> We've been there. Well, Jerko had the play in front of him. So rounding second, he could see it, that there was going to be the chance that he'd be sent home. Matt Carpenter homered his first time up. One ball, one strike with two outs. A single by Jerko, strikeout of Hazel Baker. The double by Diaz and then caught up in the rundown. Regardless, though, a 2 nothing Cardinals lead. The 2-1 two pitch, 2-2. Two and two.
When's the last time you've seen a lefty, the old days crafty lefty like this? It's been a while. Carpenter grounds out to second. A lead miss Diaz. Folks, this is now 12 doubles, 17 RBIs. From out of nowhere, what a start for the Cardinals shortstop. Diaz with a strong throw and now making a difference with his bat. A double into left center field. And it's two to nothing Cardinals. CJ Crone at the plate. And a ground ball. Base hit to left. And with that leadoff base hit, gives us a chance to say good evening to Jim Hayes. Hey there, Danny. I was talking to Albert Pujols before the game about his time in St. Louis. And what stood out to him, he said a couple of things. Number one, the lifelong friends he made uh, with the Cardinals. Some of some of those guys, he says, are like family. But also the fact that he got to learn from great players, guys like Jim Edmonds. He told me no one knows more about playing outfield than Jimmy. He said he'd be in the outfield and Edmonds would tell him where to move based on what Edmonds thought would be the next pitch coming. Pujols told me it was amazing to him. Edmonds was almost always right. He says Edmonds could see from center field what pitch was thrown. At first, Albert said he was like, come on, no one can see from out here. But Albert said Jim Edmonds could. Dan, the guy sitting next to you taught Albert a lot. Eight gold gloves. Jim Edmonds on his way to the Cardinals Hall of Fame. Johnny Giovatella is at the plate. And I remember a time when Albert Pujols was in left field, instructed not to throw. <laughs> remember that? He would flip the ball to you sometimes but then in the heat of the moment he let one go too. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say then he scared everyone and tried to throw it but we've had some interesting situations in the outfield over the years. Guys playing out of position and playing hurt. It's, uh, it's always fun to see a guy like that break into the big leagues play in the outfield play at third and then settle in at first but uh, he moves around pretty good for a big guy when he was young. Good athlete, obviously. Good jump. Throw by Molina. They miss the hit and run, and Jerko misses the tag. Crone was out by five steps, and that throw was up the line just a bit from Yadier Molina. Looked to be that Jerko was a little late getting to the bag, too. No, he was there. Throw was just up the line. <laughs> you don't see that very often. No. Nope. I'm sure uh, Jerko was pretty surprised also. It's like when you run in a pass pattern. And Tom Brady's throwing you an out 
You run out there, you turn around, ball's going to hit you in the chest every yeah. time. When it doesn't, you're surprised. Two balls, two strikes. So the stolen base for Krohn is first of the year. Little squibber hit foul. You see that swing right there? That's what the sinker can do to you. You watch a lot of videotape on a guy you don't see very often. You see sinker, 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 and you're already thinking sinker. You get a little slider out over the plate, and you've already cheated and pulled off and put yourself in a bad situation. The 2-2 pitch. Got him. A strikeout. Pulled off that pitch. Did it again. Now it's time for crickets. Something to smile about. My partner tonight, Jim Edmonds, was at this event, the annual Albert Pujols golf outing, and that's a hole-in-one for Garrett Anderson. My uh, old partner in crime, my right fielder with the Angels, and uh, his very first hole-in-one. He's only been playing golf a few years. And there it is. First one. <laughs> what a great teammate. What a great guy. Weren't there two holes in one, two? Two so, holes. Somebody else got one, too. Out to center. Gritchick backs up, makes the catch. Crone will tag up from second to third. So Albert has his golf tournament yesterday, and he is not playing golf, but he's walking around, talking to everyone, making himself available. And there were two holes in one in one golf tournament. And Albert just happened to be visiting both of those groups at the time and was standing behind both swings when they happened. How was that? He's a good luck charm. Oh, my God. I wanted him to follow us around the rest <laughs> of the day. <laughs> Albert telling me that Isabella, who is now 18 years old, it's incredible, uh, was at the tournament. His son, A.J., who he used to see all the time at the ballpark, I said, well, is he a pretty good ball player? He said, no. He said he gave up baseball. He said now he's a golfer. He's 15, and he's on the freshman team, or the uh, varsity, as a freshman yeah. in golf. And he played in the tournament, and he played the group in front of us. He can hit it? Yeah. He, he, uh, they were, Albert's pretty proud of him. I mean, he's doing a, a great job. He's growing up, and he said he's got a great golf swing. And uh, it was fun to watch him from a... Uh, from a distance, but uh, I've known him since he was a little a little tyke, so uh, every time I see him, I can't believe how much these kids change. There's Cliff Pennington mentioned that uh, Andrelton Simmons was hurt, and he's going to miss considerable time. Pennington, last time he had 300 at-bats in a season was four years ago. The Dodgers actually contacted his agent in the offseason about a hybrid role of pitching and hitting. Simmons, a full tear of his UCL, uh, UCL in his left thumb. There was talk that Yunel Escobar could be shifted to short. They said absolutely not. And so they have traded for Brendan Ryan, who is available here tonight, the former Cardinals shortstop that was with Washington at AAA Syracuse for the Washington Nationals. And the deal includes cash and a player to be named later. He was, I was under the understanding that he was told last night in Syracuse and was on a 6 o'clock flight this morning. And a fly ball lifted down that left field line. Hazel Baker over to make the catch. And here in time for batting practice today. Angels strand a runner. They've left three on. Two nothing as we head to the third.
MLB.com at bat app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day live audio and television highlights from any game. Number one app for live baseball on your phone or tablet. Here's Steven Piscotti. Cardinals with a 2 0 lead, a solo home run by Matt Carpenter, and an RBI double. Little flare into right. And that's Calhoun. That double was by Aledmus Diaz. So one away, and it brings in Matt Holliday. Holiday popped out his first time up. In three series, including this one between these two teams since the start of interleague play, the first was June 18th of 2002. That was Daryl Kyle's final game. As he went seven and two thirds, pitched a gem. Teams have split 12 games, six and six. What a tough year that was, clearly, in 2002. The fans lost their voice in Jack Buck. Daryl Kyle passed away. And the team still got into postseason play. It was a remarkable job by Tony La Russa and guys like yourself to keep everything together. Mike Matheny as Holiday lines it foul past Billy Miller. Team that went to the NLCS lost to the Giants. One of those years you just don't forget. No. Nope. I think uh, that day that Daryl Kyle pitched might have been the day that was Jack's funeral at the stadium or his, I don't know what you would call it. Memorial service. Memorial service. Yeah. His initials were in the dirt and it was a special night to honor Jack. And of all nights, we're playing the Angels. Yeah, I'll never forget it. One ball and two strikes on Holiday. Outfield shades him just a bit the other way. Watch out. I just don't know how those balls miss people. That is a missile into the seats. There's an empty row right about where <laughs> that right. ball landed. And hopefully it just caught the seats. And I don't know if you saw him or not, but earlier today, Skip Schumacher was here. And that's about right where he's sitting. <laughs> but that actually did catch somebody, I think. We're going to try to get Skip on the air with us tomorrow. Hopefully. So he might come back. Now, he has a job in baseball, my understanding. In some capacity, obviously not playing. He's not coaching, but does have a job in the game. We'll find out more tomorrow. 2-2 Two -two is hit out of play. The Cardinals, by the way, officially went over $3 million today in tickets sold. It's just incredible. Fans from all over the Midwest making their way to St. Louis. Thirteenth consecutive season of three million plus. Good at bat by Holiday, ripped into the corner and left. This will be his tenth double of the season, and Matt is one for two. Like we said, a little crafty lefty, trying to get down and inside and. Didn't get it inside enough, and Matt went out and got it. But uh, that's a good piece of hitting right there. I think that you see a lot of pop-ups today. The ball is kind of sneaking in, cross-firing a little bit, sneaking inside and tying a few guys up. But definitely not tying up Matt right there. Here's Randall Gritchick, who walked and then was left stranded back in the first inning. Seems like they're having a good time in the dugout today. See, everyone's excited to be here. Break up the monotony of same old cities all the time. I was going to ask you that. It, it really does. You know, you're not in Milwaukee and Cincinnati and Chicago, and there's nothing against those places, great places to visit. But 
You go there two or three times, depending on the schedule every year. This does break it up. Richick hits it sharply to short, and Holiday's in a rundown. And he is out of the baseline and called out. Holiday claiming he wasn't tagged, but the call had already been made by Rob Drake that he was out of the baseline. One of those instances, too, where Holiday, I'm sure, is trying to stay in a hot box and allow Gritchick to get to second base. He is definitely not out of the baseline right there. Agreed. He is well within the boundaries of the rules, as far as I know, to take a half of a step and just throw up his arms. I could hear the umpire even up here. He's saying he's out of the baseline. So it wasn't a about the tag he said holiday was not in that line and so immediately called out so regardless of the tag it doesn't matter if he missed him or not that's the out but looking at that replay he wasn't that far away from the baseline apparently one of those things that might not be reviewable either That's a base hit into right field by Yadier Molina. Molina on base for the second time. A single and a walk. I don't think this is too bad right here. I think what the umpire sees is maybe he's got to step into the grass. But uh, that grass is getting awful close to the baseline these days. And it's, I don't think right there he's really out of the baseline. But... I think when they make that decision, you make you got to make it quick, and apparently there's no way to uh, see if that's reviewable or not. Well, the Angels don't like something they're seeing here with Santiago outside of the home runs and hard hit balls. His velocity has been down. His last couple of starts, that includes tonight, and Javi Guerra, one of nine that they have in their bullpen, is getting loose. Nine in their bullpen. It also includes Corey Rasmus, the brother of Colby Rasmus, who is a top pick a few years ago, now working out of the pen for the Angels. Fernando Salas, the former Cardinal, is out there as well. No balls and two strikes. And Moss strikes out. The second strikeout for Hector Santiago. Cardinals strand two. They've left four on this far.
have the lead over the Angels. As Mike Leak goes back to work here in the bottom of the third. Let's turn to Jim Edmonds, Toyota, key to the game. I think looking at this situation here with Mike in a big ballpark, the ball doesn't carry. Defensive support, obviously, is the key to the game. He keeps the game moving, keeps you on your toes. Playing solid defense behind him is what he needs for help tonight and some offensive support in the long run. Escobar hits it to short. Aledmis Diaz, one away. Krispy Kreme does a deal. Cardinals get nine hits tonight. You're invited into Krispy Kreme tomorrow to receive a dozen of their original glazed donuts for only $3.99. Stop by one of the four St. Louis area Krispy Kreme locations or the locations in Bloomington or Springfield, Illinois for this sensational deal. Those sound yummy. Right about now, maybe in the fifth two, then again in the seventh. Then the ninth, and then a snack before bed. You're still talking about the donuts, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, become a donut person lately, so I might have to check that out. Really? I, I don't know why. I just I think because the kids, it's like something we've been doing on the weekends and getting up early with my with our neighbors and going and taking the whoever is awake out of the kids to get donuts and get them out of the house and start the day. I don't see you as donuts. A, yeah, you're not a donut guy. Though. I'm really not, but um, I think it's from all the years back in high school when I really didn't go to class as much as I should have. Or was ever. It, was that the donut shop? <laughs> Doing my homework from the night before. <laughs> don't tell my parents. They still think I'm at school. No, I'm just kidding. But it's, uh, I think it's for the kids. They'd love to get out of the house. Get, donuts are special for kids. Right? Well, and adults. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess. Why am I throwing my kids under the bus? <laughs> I'm really just taking myself. Exactly. <laughs> Using the kids as the shield and the excuse. Yeah. Nice job, That's, Edmonds. Uh, happens a lot once you have kids. <laughs> All the Disney movies that I go to now. Oh, yeah. You seem to be a Disney kind of guy, though. I could see that. But not the donuts. I am not the Disneyland dad, but I will not. I do not mind watching some Disney movies with the kids. Catch made by Biscotti, and it brings in Mike Trout. You can't watch the games on TV. You can now stream games live on your mobile device. Just go to your app store, download the free Fox Sports Go app, log in, stream the Cardinals wherever you go. For fans that don't know, you have a home here. You have a home in St. Louis, so you get a chance to see Mike Trout up close an awful lot. What is it about Mike Trout that makes him this sensational player that he is? Well, like I said, he's so big and strong, and yet he's about as fast as anyone in the league. Uh, he's got a short swing. Having, really short swing. And having that short of a swing means he doesn't have to cheat, take a lot more pitches, doesn't get wild at the plate. That is one of the biggest keys to hitting, staying under control. As crazy as this may sound, there has been chatter locally and nationally about the Angels potentially trading Mike Trout. Uh, there will be some unhappy people oh. in Southern California. And Leak doesn't get that call. Maybe a makeup for the one before. GM Billy Epler said, quote, no way. You don't trade superstars. He's, and he's, I think, the superstar right now. If this guy's playing in New York, he's on the face of everything. You put him ahead of Harper? I would rather have him than Bryce Harper just because of his speed and his center. Uh, you know, to me, and this, I'm not biased about this, but I think center field position is a pretty important position. No and doubt. If you get a chance with a guy that's a superstar, that plays center field, I'd rather have him than a right fielder or a left fielder. But I do like Bryce Harper a lot. The and he's getting out. better and better. Yes, he is. A one, two, three from Mike Lake as we head to the fourth.
As we move to inning number four, along with Jim Edmonds and Jim Hayes, I'm Dan McLaughlin. It's a look at our Kia in the driver's seat, the highest winning percentage since 2012. This coincides since Albert Pujols left, and the Cardinals, the best winning percentage. Is there a surprise on that list to you? Well, you know, the Cardinals to an extent. You know, when you lose Albert Pujols, and a guy that was coming off a very good year in 2011. And a world championship team, granted, but it's Albert Pujols. You know, that was the big story when he left. How are you going to replace him? They had an idea of what they wanted to do, and they did it. And they did it really well in this front office. I was surprised by Baltimore on that list. I think Buck Showalter's really good. Yeah. They're kind of sneaky on that list. Here's a 1-2 to Jerko. Hit left side and a diving stop by Escobar. Nice play. But as you said, they had a pretty good idea how they wanted to replace some of that uh, production that was lost. And you think about Lance Berkman having a tremendous first year with the Cardinals. Second year was down because of injuries, but then Carlos Beltran arrives on the scene. And he put together a couple of all-star campaigns. But like I said, you could talk about this all day long because it's been brought up so many times. And I mean, I know being around that they had a plan. And the plan was to take all that money and use it for a lot of people instead of one person, even though it was Albert Pujols. It's kind of like what the Dallas Cowboys did back in the day when they with the Herschel Walker situation. You know, you get somebody with that's that much value, even though they didn't really trade for someone, but they had use for all of that stuff that was left open. They had a high fly ball off the bat of Hazel Baker for out number two. And left open was a lot of money. And they had a lot of use for it. Oh, yeah. Spread it around. Here's a lead miss Diaz who has the fifth lowest strikeout percentage right now in baseball. Balls put in play he's hitting over 400. It's at 402 so it gives you an idea how hard he hits the ball. His war right now if you're into sabermetrics is 12th best in all of baseball. I mean any number you want to look at this guy is putting up some kind of year. And he pops it up here. The defense by Yanel Escobar. This hot shot off the bat of Jed Jerko. Almost through the webbing.
And again with Jim Hayes. Jimmy. Dan, Jimmy was talking about uh, Brendan Ryan having that long day getting here, found out about the trade that brought him to the Angels at 1.30 in the morning. He told me he tried to hide from Albert Pujols in the clubhouse, <laughs> but when Albert saw him, he gave him a bear hug. He said it was so tight that it pushed a couple of vertebrae back into place, so he canceled <laughs> his visit to the chiropractor. And sure enough, there they were, Albert and Brendan holding court during stretching. Ryan said that Albert asked him to tell some stories from his days in St. Louis and how Tony La Russa used to get mad at him. And then Albert was laughing the whole time. That's today. I don't think Albert was laughing back then. <laughs> no, sir. Here's an 0-2 pitch to Pujols. Hit up the middle. Diving stop from his knees. Jerko and the pick by Moss. Tremendous play. And Albert is over 2 tonight. Can I second to not laughing about that, too, by the way? He was a little bit frustrating, I'm sure, as a teammate. He's just such a good player, and he just couldn't really keep it under control. But, you know, he's a, he was a good teammate. He just was a, 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 lot, a little bit of a handful when, he's, when you're a young player like that. But uh, he's been around the league and he's got a lot of talent. It'll be fun to see how he fits in here in the American League, Anaheim. Here's Daniel Nava. Took a very good play by Meledmus Diaz to retire him and get out of a threat in the first. Jim Hayes, I want to ask you too, the Cardinals have shuffled up their rotation for this series and for the weekend. Yeah, Carlos Martinez had been dealing with that respiratory illness, was originally scheduled to make his next start Thursday night. Mike Matheny saying they're going to push Carlos back a couple of days just to give him a little extra rest. Uh, his next start will be Saturday. It'll be Garcia, Wayno, and then Waka, and then Carlos Dan. So with the off day, it's not like pushing anybody up or forcing them on short days rest as Moss puts away Daniel Nava, who's over two. Let's go back to the play by Jed Jerko. Not sure if Mike Lee got a piece of this or not, but regardless, very good play. Well, Albert hit that ball so hard, and it was literally right off the shin of Mike Leak that he was kind of coasting at first, and he looked up and saw Jerko up the middle, and he had to kick it in a little bit, but uh, he definitely didn't think that someone was going to catch that. C.J. Crone, one for one, a single and a stolen base. Mike Leak is hitting his spots here tonight. You talked about it. He doesn't have overpowering stuff, so if he leaves something over the middle of the plate, watch out. But when he hits his spots, he's very, very good. You just wonder, too, Jimmy, if he gets that first win under his belt, what happens after that? Well, that's what I'm thinking. I think that he's really pressing for that first one. And when you're out there as a pitcher, you get the ball in your hand the whole game. You know that pivotal inning is coming. And you know when you have guys to, when you have to get those guys out in this particular spot. You might try to push a little bit. Look back here where they're playing Albert. I don't think Albert sees Jerko playing so far up the middle. But uh, definitely a surprise when it was caught. Diaz to his left. Then from his knees, couple of hops in the pick by Moss. We said the defense in particular, the infield defense, has to be good tonight with all the ground balls that Mike Lee can induce. And it has been, especially Moss with a couple of picks. Diaz, a couple of dazzling plays. A lead miss, Diaz. A little bit of everything here tonight.
Okay, Scotty, thanks. Top of the lineup again. And here is Carpenter who homered to start our night. He's fifth. Remember the AOS from 1998 until 2012 featured only four teams. Then Houston shifted to this division. That move gives all six Major League Baseball divisions an equal five teams. And we will see Houston, Seattle, here with the Angels on the road in interleague play. Also we will head to Kansas City, a regional rivalry there. And the Cardinals host Houston, Texas, Kansas City, and Oakland this year in interleague. Sweeping breaking ball for a strike, two and two. Starting to see Carpenter take better at bats. This one about good today in batting practice, I thought. He looked solid, strong. Sometimes it just takes a while to get yourself, you know, you get out of spring training and just kind of lose the feel. Little check swing and a line drive to second base. Ledmus Diaz. Folks over on the Angels side said, this guy's pretty good. He's showing us why tonight. A couple of hops there to Moss. Nice pick. It's a great play. It's just smart throw, too. You know, he's playing above his years, obviously, but throw that ball down on the ground like that instead of trying to get something on it, flipping it over to first base. The ball stays low and, and, and keeps its velocity bouncing like that versus not getting anything on it. Great play. Seems like every time I do a game, he's showing off. He's got some talent. Yep. Here's Piscotti with a high fly ball into right center field. This ball is off the base of the wall, and Steven Piscotti trots into second base with his 10th double of the year. Saturday, May 21st, 30,000 fans ages 16 and older will be a big hit in their new adult Cardinals pullover. This quarter zip, short sleeve pullover features a bird on the bat logo. Get your tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. In steps Holiday, he doubled into the corner in left field. For Piscotti, by the way, that's 41 hits to lead the club. And that's seventh most in the National League. Matt Holiday, low ball hitter. You know he'd still though love to have that pitch back. Yeah, and you can see uh, Gio definitely wanting the ball down in the zone, even though it is Matt Holiday. You see some of the struggles of some of these pitchers is because they're just not getting the ball down on a consistent basis. That is definitely the key to pitching. One of that one back too. 0 oh and two. Sometimes those ball, the ball up at your belt ends up going a long, long way. I think it's going to be really interesting this year at the age of 36 to see where the numbers end up for Matt Holiday. Does he go on one of those patented tears where he can carry a club or is he going to be consistent all year? Hitting just 156 with runners in scoring position this year. It was close to 400 a year ago. Sometimes when you hit 400 in the course of a season with runners in scoring position, the next year they're not going to let you do that again. You woke up some teams and they're going to make the guy on deck beat you. You get a situation where you got a young player in the on deck circle. They might pitch around Matt a little bit, see what they can get him to swing at. And then they know that maybe they can get Randall to expand his zone and a little bit easier time getting a younger hitter out. At least that's what they think. One and two the count. Javi Guerra, right-hander throwing in the pen. Just wonder if Holiday would reach, would they go to the right-hander then to face Randall Grichik?
Here's a one-two pitch. And Holiday rips it into left center field. One hops off the wall, his second double of the night. He drives in his 15th, and it's 3 to nothing, St. Louis. The Cardinals with four doubles tonight and two back-to-back. That'll be all for him, you see right here. Ask for the ball down. Be careful what you wish for. You get the ball down in the zone, and you got a low ball hitter. Not a whole lot of velocity. Matt pounds it into the gap. I would never ask for a ball down against <laughs> Matt Holiday ever. He crushes that. Everybody's got a spot that they're weak, and everyone's got a spot that they're good. And he's definitely good down below the zone. So Javi Guerra will be part of our Chevy call to the pin that knocks out Hector Santiago and the Cardinals with a three-run lead. Baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. And the Ramirez, a 468-foot home run. He's the first baseman for the Red Sox this year. Steven Strasburg signs an extension with the Nationals, $175 million. And Raul Mondesi Jr. suspended 50 games, a positive PED test for the Kansas City Royals. Some of the news and headlines around Major League Baseball. As Javi Guerra takes over. He's pitched with the Dodgers and the White Sox. He started in the minor leagues this year. 30-year-old from Denton, Texas. Worked a scoreless inning last time out, which was Sunday against Tampa Bay. Mike Trout back to the wall. Trout leaps. Oh! He couldn't come up with it. And it's Randall Gritchick with a two-run homer. Remember Gritchick selected ahead of Mike Trout in the draft. Both were in the minor leagues, and he nearly robbed his good buddy just out of his reach. It's a two-run homer, and it was almost one of those patented Mike Trout catches in center. I was waiting for him to show the ball in his glove the whole time. I was, too. From our angle here, it looked like he caught it. And there's Carlos Martinez. Yes, and that feels good for Randall Gritchick. Home run number five. So the double by Holiday, the home run, and now here's Molina. That closes the book on Hector Santiago. And the reaction of the crowd, apparently he just missed that. He did. Had it looked like timed perfectly, too. One ball, one strike. There is an art to doing that, as you know. <laughs> I was going to say, sometimes you wish your glove or your arm was just a little bit longer. Everything right. He did everything right and got back there and timed it and just missed it. Here's a 1-1 pitch to Molina, who singled to right. Crouch, uh, Trout was so close to making another tremendous catch, and 
Five to nothing Cardinals hanging breaking ball lifted out of play. Good news on the other side is something like that happens to a guy like Randall what he's been going through. That could really really crush you. You'd sit there and say well it's going to be one of those years and you definitely don't want to say that so. Uh, that's. Good situation that he did not catch that even though it would have been an exciting highlight. A lot of people thought your catch in Kansas City with your back to the infield was the best catch you ever made. I thought the catch in Cincinnati over the wall. Well you did that a couple of times but the one you know I'm referring to your entire arm was over the wall backhanded catch was the best I had ever seen. Well, Do you have a you. favorite or one that stands above the other. You know what I don't. I don't really oh, know. Oh, you do. I don't really don't. I stop really don't. It. You know what's funny? It's the ones you see the most, and you yeah. they, they stick out. And um, definitely, uh, both of them were something I'll always remember. But uh, uh, it's the best catch I've ever seen, without a doubt. I mean, it's not even close. It was one of the best calls of a game that I had ever heard when I heard the replay. It did such a fantastic job. Get over here and let's hug it out. <laughs> <laughs> The story, the story is, is as good as the catch. I think with Izzy and sitting down the night yes. before, and he was talking about it. That's ripped down the left field line. Extra bases again. And Molina has his ninth double of the year. The Cardinals with three doubles in the inning, and five tonight. Gotti looked like he was sitting all over that breaking ball. Well for fans that don't know that story with Izzy what was it. Well the funny thing is that the night before I had robbed a home run and Izzy and I were sitting down in the hotel bar or the hotel restaurant whatever it was and they showed the highlight and he said how come you never do that for me. And I said to him you don't give up a lot of home runs first of all and second of all if I get a chance I will And the very <laughs> next night. And that's where the reaction came from. And plus it was the third time in that year. Well, I think it was actually the third time in two or three weeks that I had robbed Cincinnati of a home run. Two of those Jason LaRue. And, and then it was back to back nights on top of that and the Isringhausen story uh, to go along with it. So it was a lot of fun. One ball one strike with one out runner at second base four consecutive hits all four have gone for extra bases. I'm actually doing a sit down with Mike Trout tomorrow for uh, the uh, California version of Fox and I'm curious to see what they're going to have us do. Are you interviewing him or somebody. I think I'm interviewing him or talking with him. So I don't know. I don't have all the details yet but uh, I'm looking forward to it. Saw him yesterday at the golf tournament. Talked to him for a minute. But uh, what great, do you want. Great I mean, kid. As a guy that is a great player that, that you are and you were. What, what do you want to know about Mike Trout. What is it about him that interests you at all. I, you know what I really just it's funny. I just would like to. I think you just talk about the same things that went through my head when I was playing see if he thinks the same way I want to know if he thinks that he's going to catch every ball that goes up in the air because that's what I thought yeah or I thought that was my job me plays pretty deep out there I think he's thinking about catching some of those balls that are hit by these guys that are bigger and stronger I didn't really think about catching the home run as much as I just played the position according to who I thought was going to hit the ball where and so I knew Izzy was throwing that night cutters away and Jason LaRue if he got the bat the ball away from him he was going to hit a fly ball into right center field with some pop. And so I actually backed up a little bit knowing that that combination between him Izzy pitching and Jason hitting was going to produce probably a fly ball in that area and it just works out that way. And so when Albert talks about knowing what's coming that's how I played the game. You could see it happening if a certain pitch is thrown in a certain area to a certain hitter it's going to end up in the same area over and over and over. 
Well, obviously that story means a lot to Jason Isringhouse, and he just texted me and he said, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that's that's easy, though. That's normal. <laughs> His name came up today for how how blunt and honest he is in spring training. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect anything different. <laughs> Max is shocked he's watching the game right now. It's a little past your bedtime, buddy. Here's Jed Jerko, singled and scored back in the second inning. And also grounded out. Of course, Izzy, the all-time saves leader in Cardinals history. And he was a good one. Nasty stuff. You know, Mike Sosha carries, as we mentioned earlier, nine relievers. It's not by accident. Their starters just aren't going deep. They're trying to figure out anybody that can get some outs out of that bullpen to potentially get them to their closer. And this crowd, and they've been very quiet here tonight, but they are restless right now. Well, and like what we talked about earlier today, when, when you see a team with a weird number of people in a certain position, you can see that they're struggling somewhere. And to try and find continuity in the bullpen or in the pitching staff during the course of the season can disrupt a lot of other things. And you can see why teams are struggling is because of they're doing all these different things. Sometimes it doesn't always work out the way you planned and you try to change on the fly and it can throw off an entire team by having to find and fit pieces together in the course of the season. So runners at first and second. One out. And a 3-0 pitch is a strike. Guerra came in the first pitch. A home run to center field by Randall Gritchick. Double by Molina. A walk to Moss, and now three and one the count on Jed Jerko. Three and two. Left hander, they've got two in their bullpen. Jose Alvarez. Getting loose in the pen. I'm curious to hear what you have to say about stuff like that. You've been sitting up here for so long watching these games. Is that something that just as soon as you see nine guys in the pen or or a situation where the two holes struggling. There's a base hit into right field. Molina being waved in. Calhoun, his throw is cut off, and it's six to nothing Cardinals. Absolutely. And I you see. see it from up here, and you say, every time I see this situation, this team is struggling. No and question. It's obvious. No question. You just don't see nine guys in a bullpen. And Mike Sosia will go to the lefty Alvarez to face Jeremy Hazelbaker, the Diaz on deck. So that'll be it for Guerra. He could not record it out. Home run, double, walk, RBI single by Jed Jerko. It's our Chevy call to the pen. And it was Randall Gritchick. Got it all started against Guerra. This home run to center, 6 nothing, St. Louis.
special theme ticket to Bud Bash. You can get an exclusive bobblehead and autograph from Chris Duncan, Tuesday, May 17th. Purchase your tickets at cardinals.com slash Bud Bash. This is our Hyundai pitch arsenal on Jose Alvarez. One of two lefties they have in their pen. I got to be honest, two guys that you played with, Chris Duncan and Brad Thompson, were the last two that I ever thought would be in media. And they are tremendous. They do a great job. They're both doing a great job. <laughs> Am I right with that? I mean, did you see that coming? You Those know, two? I, you know, it's really funny you say that. You know, when you around St. Louis and you hear people talk about your ex-teammates, so many people have given Chris Duncan compliments about what he does on the radio. It's it's awesome to hear because, you know, he just is so such a perfectionist and always worries. The fly ball lifted to left. Oh, he's, you know, for our fans, we got a lot of fans that are out of state or out of the market of St. Louis, and they get a chance to see Brad Thompson, who is terrific. First time he ever came up to the big leagues. Brad Thompson had his headset on listening to music and just staring right into his locker. That's it, just right into it. Didn't look to his right or his left. Scared to death. Yep, scared <laughs> to death. Quiet. And he's tremendous on our shows. And then if you listen on the radio to Chris Duncan, who's with Anthony Stalter uh, on ESPN Radio in town, those two do a terrific job. And Chris, a guy that was not one to say much to anybody when he played, at least to the media. But, man, is he good. Yeah, he's doing a great job. He studies a lot. And that's what you have to do, I guess, to be good is he study. When I would see him at the gym, he would be riding the bike and studying or watching video or watching sports that were going to be on that day or was on the night before. So he'd have things to talk about. And what he does is tough, I think, uh, on the ESPN radio deal because they deal with every sport. And it's nonstop. There's no messing around. There's no it, it is serious sports radio, and you have to know your stuff. Yep. Runners at first and second for Aledmus Diaz. We doubled in the second run of the night back in the second inning. Are we getting to the point, Jim, that Mike Matheny moves Diaz up in the lineup with the kind of numbers he's producing? That's an interesting question because I think there's always that fine line of not wanting to disrupt a player like this because he is comfortable and he is fitting in now and getting his chance. And, um, you know, you, do you want to disrupt him for the benefit of the team? Or you just kind of let him stay where he's at? I, I don't know. I, I, I think, yeah, you move him up. But then also, is he going to get pitched differently? Is he going to think differently? Is he going to put more pressure on himself? So, I mean, that's what's so amazing about sitting up here watching the game from a distance is you just don't know what's going on in everyone's mind down there. And there's reasons why they do the things that they do. Here's a 3-1 pitch. Watch out here to Diaz. And a lead miss hits it into shallow center field. Here comes Mike Trout. Good speed and makes the catch. Cardinal strand two, but a big inning for St. Louis. They played four. It's six nothing. Mike Leak back to work.
paid Angels this year. Albert Pujols, C.J. Wilson, who is hurt, Jared Weaver, Mike Trout. He's probably worth every penny. And then Josh Hamilton. Pujols, after this year, five years, $140 million left on his deal. That's after this season. Josh Hamilton to take it through next year. They're paying him $46 million to play on a team that they've gone head-to-head -head with. And that's ripped out to deep left field. Hazel Baker back in, makes the catch up against the wall, and he might be a little hurt. Nice play, Jeremy Hazel Baker. It's a great play right there, and that wall is not too forgiving when you get it caught just like that in the middle of his back. See, he's going back. He makes a great play here, and you don't have time to stop. Yeah, there's not a lot of give in that no, that's ledge. A, that, those, these new fences are all just padding around cement. Back in the day, I was going to say, back in the day when I played here, there was a chain link fence out there that was totally just removable. It swayed back and forth. They had padding on the front. You could run into it full speed, and it was like a springboard. Nowadays, everything is holding up a wall or holding up a, a the fence or, or, I mean, uh, the stands and scoreboards. And it's a little bit more uh, solid than it used to be. Well, Leak has been given a, a six-run lead here. And he had had only 13 runs of support in his previous six starts. There's a ground ball. Led Miss Diaz. Two down as Soto is retired. And it brings in Cliff Pennington. Think about that. Pujols, five years, 140. Hamilton, they're paying 46 million this year and next. Now they say one of the things that they're doing is waiting for the CBA to go through, which is up after this year, which they think will then give them more money to spend because they won't be hit by going over the tax threshold with their payroll, and they'll be more aggressive. I mean, you see that name at the end, the fact that they're having to pay Josh Hamilton so much money still. To go away. To go away, be in Texas, and, and still and even be hurt. Just as a big blow to what they thought he was going to bring to the table. Yeah, at the time, you're, you're lessening Texas in your division. You're adding a premier power hitter, but it never worked out here with the Angels. One ball in, two strikes with two outs and nobody on. Cliff Pennington flied to left his first time up. What have you seen from Mike Leake tonight? He's got some good defensive help. He's moved the ball around, kept the ball down. A little bit more like we saw in spring training where it's in, out, in, out, and not so much just trying to get by with a sinker away. And he picks up a strikeout. That's number three. Jeremy Hazelbaker can play all three outfield spots and takes a hit away from Johnny Giavatella. Up against the wall. And a 1-2-3 for Mike Lake as we head to the sixth.
the story here tonight. Really good defensive plays on ground balls. See this ball back up the middle. Mike did slow it down a little bit with his glove. This play right here is outstanding. This ball's hit hard. And then you got Hazel Baker at the end running this ball down, not worrying about the wall. This is what you need to get that first W. You need some runs, you need some defense, and you need some luck. He's been pitching pretty well. He's been moving the ball around, like I said. What, what you like to see in that situation is he's been moving the ball around, but that last strikeout with the ball in, up and in, not afraid to challenge guys. I think that that's the key to his success. They just can't rely on just flipping sinkers and getting a slider here and there. Here's Matt Carpenter. And a new pitcher is in for the Angels, A.J. Ochter. It is spelled A-C-H-T-E-R, but pronounced Ochter. It's our Chevy call to the pen. He's a sinker baller. Well, who knows? We may see all nine relievers tonight. <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you? No, I wouldn't, Jim. <laughs> if you're going to have them all out there, you might as well use them. Right. Well, might as well. He's right. But that means that uh, there's a couple ways to look at it. One, the Cardinals <laughs> are putting up a lot of runs. I like to see that. We might be here for a while. That's the second part. Carpenter, high fly ball. This one is gone. His second of the night. 7 nothing Cardinals. A no-doubter for Matt Carpenter. We may just see all nine tonight. He might be here a while. It's getting late in St. Louis. People are going to miss some fireworks if that happens. Remember the story early in spring training. Do you move Carpenter down in the lineup because of things like this? 28 home runs last year. He loves being in the leadoff spot. Wow, he tattooed that pitch. 102 miles an hour off the bat of Matt Carpenter. It's amazing Third. how much power he has for not a lot of movement at the plate. Not they, a big guy either. But just a big, long extension kind of a swing. When he gets the bat head through the zone, it just keeps going with extension like a that's how you get that backspin and that ball really flies off his bat. Piscotti pops it up a mile high. Escobar makes the catch. And there's one away. Steven is one for four. If you were to describe how a player generates power, is it bat speed? Is it backspin? The torque of the swing? What is it? It's a little bit of everything, but I think the main thing is if you're a home run hitter with power, you have to stay behind the ball. You cannot get your weight to the front half of your body. And when you put your front foot down, you still have to have that. It's a, it's, you're kind of hitting against your front foot, which can allow your center of gravity to go past the midpoint of your body. So when you put your foot down, you still got to be on your back foot a little bit to get the bat out in front. And then that creates the power, and then obviously the swing being out in front, creating the backspin, allows the ball to travel farther. I always found it amazing in your swing, your stance, the base of it was so wide, and sometimes you wouldn't even pick that front foot up, but you always had a little bit of an uppercut, and your weight was always back, where you watch other guys, like a Colt Wong, high leg kick. You know, it's different ways to get it done. Well, I found early in my career here in Anaheim that I could not uh, pull the ball in the air when I was using my stride. And I, had, when I had picked up my foot, it had pushed me forward past the center point. And Uh-oh. That could be another one. It is another one. What a big night for the Cardinals offense. Holiday, three hits tonight. Two doubles, and now this solo home run, his fourth of the year.
nine extra base hits for the Cardinals. We are only in the sixth. 105 miles an hour off the bat. Be interesting to see if we could get some kind of a replay or or get a good vision of what we were talking about on command. Thank you, Matt Holiday. But <laughs> staying back and really just driving down. And some people can get it done like Matt swinging down through the ball and getting backspin. And some people can get it done by swinging up through the zone and still getting backspin, but just a different way of doing it. But I was saying I was having a hard time driving the ball in the air to right field because I was getting my oof, getting my um, weight too far forward. And uh, I was kind of going over the top of the ball. And every time I tried to pull the ball, it was basically hitting the ball on the ground. And so one year I just I was, I was in the big leagues and I went home that winter and just said, I got to figure out how to pull the ball better. And the only way I could do it was just to spread out. There's a broken bat, hit left side. Escobar throws it away. So an error on Yanel Escobar, his fifth, as he was spinning wildly to make that throw. You could see that coming. Let's go back to what you're talking about here with the Matt Holiday swing. He has the leg kick and then explodes into the baseball. Helps that he's humongous, but you can <laughs> see right here when he gets, even though he has a big leg kick, that he keeps his weight back. And instead of getting out in front, he's staying back on that back leg. But when that leg comes down, his hips aren't really going forward. You can see right there, he is behind the ball with his entire body, and that supplies all that power. And it's funny because you're using your legs, but your legs are really not even in the play. It's a fact that you're just basically behind the ball, and it keeps all that strength coiled up in your body for some reason, and that is where you get your power from. And also he is humongous. humongous. <laughs> <laughs> With a sick beard this year. <laughs> you like that look there? I, I I'm a little I'm a little 50-50 with that look, only because when I got to spring training, I was standing right next to him and did not know it was him. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting it. It's like the craze now. All these guys with beards. And it wasn't like that at the no, beginning of spring it training. It was long in spring yeah. training. And I think he was sitting down, so I couldn't tell that it was him the size of a mountain. Now Grichik is in a rundown here and tagged out. Second time the Cardinals have run into an out between second and third. In a tight game, that could cause problems. They did a great job on that rundown right there. I mean, if you can see from what we were looking at up here, that is textbook rundown. They close the gap. They give the ball up. And he makes an easy tag. Maybe the best thing they've done all night so far. Yeah. I guess you didn't get the memo about beards when you're in the booth because you are supposed to shave before games. Shaved. It just grows a lot faster. Oh, is that right? In about another hour, you're going to be caught up to me here. <laughs> this is one day. <laughs> this is not even a full day. See, I like to give, for our fans that don't know, I give you a little trouble about at times there may be a lack of a razor in the Edmonds household. <laughs> I'm actually really good about it nowadays. It's, when I played, I was a little lazy. <laughs> I think when you get older and you get a little gray in there, you, you, you tend to shave a little bit more often than you did when you were younger. <laughs> Speaking of shaving, when we were down in San Diego, I walked in to talk to Mark McGuire. And he had a full, like, beard, and it was pretty gray. Pretty gray, and, yeah. but it, all the years I've known him, I've never seen him with a beard. And then finally when it's gray, he grows it out. I thought it was the opposite way. <laughs> <laughs> Moss late with that swing, two and one. Nine extra base hits hit by the Cardinals here tonight. Two home runs in the inning, three total on the night. Cardinals have put up six runs in innings five and six and looking for more.
And Moss drives it into right field. A hard hit ball. Molina moving to second base. So two on, two outs. Jed Jerko will be the hitter. Through two good sliders, Jones tied him up and then maybe tried a little bit too hard to make a better pitch. Left it out over the plate and it gets hammered. They're swinging the bat tonight, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Cardinals with 13 hits. Mike Leak has allowed just three. Two runners on, and Jerko hits a fly ball out to center. Quite a night for the Mets. Matt Carpenter and Matt Holliday, those two. With five extra base hits, Carpenter with his second home run. That was in the first. This one, a solo shot in the sixth. All smiles for Matt Carpenter and the Cardinals tonight as they're rolling in game number one. Runs in this game tonight. Cardinals with a lead of eight runs for Mike Leake, and this is what the doctor ordered for Mike Leake. Chance to pick up that first win, and the offense has come through. It's the top of the lineup, Escobar, Calhoun, and Mike Trout. Escobar, a single to right. He's also grounded out to short. Part of the story that will be overlooked in this game, at least thus far, is the defense of the Cardinals. Very good here tonight. Escobar, a high fly ball out to center. That's carrying all the way to close to the track. And Gridget makes the play. Friday, May 20th, 30,000 fans ages 16 and older receive an exclusive Yadier Molina Garden Gnome. 200 lucky fans receive a gnome with either a gold or platinum glove to commemorate Molina's many awards. Tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. Cole Calhoun, 0 for 2 tonight. Boy, if you're Mike Sosha, Jimmy, you sit there and you look at your team, you've just lost three straight, you're struggling, having lost seven of nine, and you're dealing with all the injuries. Your starter, who's been one of the better ones, especially at home, gets knocked around tonight. You're not hitting outside of Trout and Escobar. If you're a manager, 
you're always trying to think steps ahead in the game. You're also trying to think steps ahead in the season. You can't let things get away from you. It's something he has to be concerned about, I'm sure. This is definitely not what he wants to see tonight. You get a team like the Cardinals come in and to this point, pound you for eight runs. In the air out to right to Scotty. For round number two. Kind of feels like sometimes it just keeps getting pounded on the head. And things aren't going right. Blues are in the playoffs game seven tomorrow. After the game, watch player interviews, hear from the guys who know the Blues best. Missouri Lottery Blues Live post game show only on Fox Sports Midwest. Good luck to the Blues. Game seven tomorrow in Dallas. By this time tomorrow, we'll know if they are off to the Western Conference Finals. Trout is one for two, single to center, and it's no balls and two strikes. This is the Mike Leak that we're used to, too, pounding the strike zone ahead in the count. Well, I was going to say this is probably good for him right here to have an eight-run lead to just be able to go out there and throw the ball now and then invent himself again where, you know, before not winning, being careful, trying to keep your team close, you try to nibble a little bit too much, and you don't go out there and pitch like you're capable. Now he's letting it go. He's breaking balls a little sharper. He's going right at hitters with his fastball. Chevy Fox tracks, and he tried to put Trout away with the breaking ball. That's what I'm talking about that makes Mike Trout so good. Two good sinkers, and he still doesn't cheat and get caught with the breaking ball. Went with the breaking ball again, and it's fouled back. And Leak may have gotten away with that pitch. Now this is when you watch to see what your team is made out of too. If you're Mike Sosha, what kind of guys are what guys actually are going out there and playing still at this point in the game when it's eight to nothing in the sixth inning. See Mike Trout taking a really good at bat here. See guys like Albert. See if they set the tone for the rest of the team or who's kind of giving up and waiting for tomorrow. And it's a two out walk and it brings in Pujols. BJC Healthcare, a difference maker. That is Albert Pujols and what he did with St. Louis. A couple of the World Series titles. He has hit 262 here. But his numbers in St. Louis, over 1,700 games, three MVPs, 445 home runs, and batted 328. Pujols lines it into right center field, and there's Randall Grichik. So nothing to show for it. A couple of hard hit balls off the bat of Albert Pujols.
Yellowwood bringing the lumber. The Cardinals with three home runs tonight. Here's Jeremy Hazelbaker, followed by Ruben Tejada, and then Matt Carpenter. Excuse me, four home runs hit tonight by the Cardinals, two by Carpenter, one by Matt Holliday, and the other by Randall Gritchick. Hazel Baker tonight is 0 for 3. Only spot in the lineup that has not reached base. Much of this crowd is gone home for the night. Off speed pitch, Jeremy out in front. Evens it up at two balls and two strikes. I don't think much of this crowd never really made it in the park tonight. Yeah, I was thinking that too. <laughs> and those that did arrive started to sneak out. Yep, right after the, uh, the sixth inning. They've done a really nice job with this ballpark in making this a baseball only facility. Gateway Honda home run inning. Cardinals hit a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. As you know, it could be kind of cavernous at one point. But now with what they've done with some of the construction and the waterfall out in center field, that's helped out. It's just amazing what this place looks like, and it's been here as long as it has. I yeah. mean, even when you're up here in the stands, in the booth, down in the suites, down in the suites, down below, behind the uh, plate. I mean, it looks like a brand new stadium. Everything's fresh. Seats look brand new. Waterfall's been out there forever. Now, a long time. I used to climb up there in the rocks during batting practice when I was here. Really? When it got hot, I was. <laughs> I always said I wanted to go swimming in there one day, but I never really got the nerve to do it. But a couple guys walked through there. I mean, they clean up everything. Field looks amazing. Did a really good job keeping this place fresh. There's Ruben Tejada as the pinch hitter for Ledmus Diaz, who was one for three with an RBI double. Cardinals will have a uh, decision to make fairly soon on what to do with Tommy Pham. Once they activate him and bring him up, and they're going to take their time with Tommy because basically the amount of time that he has missed has been about the amount of time that you'd have for spring training. So they want to make sure that when he comes up, he's ready to play. One ball, one strike. As Tejada pops it up. Out of play. Under Mike Sosha, of course, the Angels won the World Series back in 2002. And the Angels celebrating the 50th anniversary of Angel Stadium. It's been their home for 50 of their 56 seasons. Tejada swinging a miss as he strikes out. Back to back K's. This place used to be open, then it was closed, and then now back open again. When I was a kid, you used to be able to see driving down the freeway. You could see inside the stadium and see what was going on. Still can do it a little bit here, but it was a lot more open and flat in the outfield back in the day. And it was neat to drive by a big league ballpark and be able to see inside. There's Colton Wong. Cardinals have faced lefties in three of the last four games in terms of starters, so he's been sitting. He'll pinch hit here for Carpenter and a sliding catch. Did he make it? He did. What a play. Daniel Nava in foul territory. Outstanding from the Angels left fielder. What a play that was. Avoids the sidewall sliding and timed it perfectly to make the catch. What a play. Time to stretch. 8-0.
get the StubHub app. Not only will you find seats you'll love whenever you want, you can find the best seat for your buck when you sort by the best value. So get the StubHub app today. Here's Daniel Navo just made that very good play. Backhanded by Moss to Mike Leak. Cole Long, by the way, stays in the game at second base. Ruben Dejada stays in the game after pinch hitting at short. And Jed Jerko ships from second to third. I just got a nice text message from Jason Simontacci. He says that the uh, Springfield Baby Birds are listening to us and watching us on their bus ride back home. It's and nice to know. Yeah, Jason is uh, the pitching coach at AA Springfield. Cardinals have some very good arms. Lower portions of the minor leagues. And if you're wondering about Alex Reyes, who is the top prospect for the Cardinals, his suspension will be over around the 21st, 23rd. The Memphis Redbirds have had a couple of rainouts, and that does apply to his suspension because of tickets sold. There's a chopper hit to Jed Jerko. Simon Tachi, boy, you talk about a guy that got the most out of everything he had and gave this club a great lift. I think that's what could make him a great coach. Well, I think he is a great coach because he's one of those guys that had to learn everything as he was going. He had to learn at each level, learn at the big leagues, always improving himself, inventing himself in different ways, he was a gamer, battled. And those are the guys that make the best coaches. They've had to go through everything. Nothing was given or was super easy. He didn't throw 96, but he won, and he went out there and proved himself day in and day out. I think that kind of a guy right there makes a great coach. And those guys in Springfield have a great opportunity to learn from someone that worked his butt off and get to where he got. Long backhands and not in time. Gia Votella gets down the line for an infield hit. Bobbled just a bit by Wong. He almost come, uh, came up with a great play. I think it's really awesome, too, that those guys are so close. Yeah. Um, and proximity to being able to watch the um, the big league team play and see what they're you know gonna get a chance to experience one day and I think it's cool to be that close I've seen these kids come up on a day off and be able to go to a game or when I was in the minor leagues we were so far away from the big leagues it was ridiculous you were in Vancouver I was in Vancouver I was in Quad Cities um, I was lucky enough to play in Palm Springs but never really got a chance to come and check it out well that's why they have it set up to the way that they do in the minor leagues with spring training and the proximity of the clubhouses to the major league guys as Giovanni Soto rounds to Wong who makes the play Mike Leake is through seven and he has been sharp here tonight only four hits allowed we move to the eighth Cardinals on top
Hayes. Dan McLaughlin with you is Stephen Piscotti. We'll lead it off here in the eighth. Piscotti is one for four with a double and a run scored. Want to wish our buddy Al Rabaski all the best as he had a medical procedure today and may miss a little time, but a routine procedure. And uh, Al, I know you're watching tonight, resting comfortably. We love you. Get back here soon. Make sure that everybody knows, not serious. He'll be back. Just going to miss a little time. One ball, one strike on Steven Piscotti. Holiday on deck, and then Randall Gritchick. It's sharply, and Escobar comes up with it. Fires to first and takes a hit away from Steven Piscotti. Getting a lot of well wishers in the booth tonight, aren't we? We even got a, uh, a nice message from Ryan Franklin. It's nice to hear that people are listening. Well, you said no one was listening to us earlier, <laughs> and now we you know. know. I'm kidding, obviously. Well, at least the organization is listening. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's everybody that's hired and on the payroll exactly. texting us. Here's Holiday. He's had a big night, pair of doubles and a home run. It's amazing. It never gets old hearing from your old teammates. Just being around the guys. Like I came here today early uh, and walked around here, and I see Mark Gubaza, Mark Langston. Get to see Albert. You know all the people that used to work here in Anaheim when I was here, and then obviously the Cardinals are here. And it's just like it was like being in one big party. You know, it's just like so many people that I've grown up being around. Ex teammates. Skip Schumacher was here. Albert had his foundation, and those people were here. Just a good day all the way around for everyone, and then they get to see each other. It's just a, like I said, who doesn't love a great interleague game with a lot of people that you've grown up watching, playing with, being around, former ball players around the ballpark. You know what I'm disappointed in? That our fans have not had the opportunity to see Albert Pujols at Bush Stadium. You know, if this, and I, I've said this before, if this was Derek Jeter still playing and he left the Yankees and interleague play was in their division, there is no way that Major League Baseball would not allow Derek Jeter to go back to New York and play at Yankee Stadium. And here we are two times having gone through to face the, uh, the Angels. And our fans have not seen pools at home. And I, I just think that's a shame. I hope Albert plays out the contract. As I said, he's got five more years after this season. So you would have barring postseason one more crack at it. But Albert Pujols needs to be back at some point in St. Louis. It needs to happen. It, it, that same situation, not as big of a deal for baseball in general, but it took me 10 years to come back and play in the place that I grew up. And it was really weird that all that time went by and Cardinals didn't come here. And it took me until I got to Milwaukee and literally 10 years later to come back and play here for the first time. Yeah, it, it, you would think that they would make an effort to get Anaheim out there as soon as they could. Mark Gubiza, who is the analyst for the Angels, your former teammate, good guy. He said, what do you think it would be like when Pujols goes back to St. Louis? We just saw the reception that David Freeze got, and there's Mark there on the left. He said, what do you think the fan reaction would be? And I, I said it would be overwhelmingly positive. I don't know if you would have said that initially when he left St. Louis, but I do think now that time has passed, it would be overwhelmingly positive. I, I, he did so many great things in St. Louis, both on and off the field. And he's the closest player, I would say, that's been near the icon status of Stan the Man. Now, there's been guys that have had great runs, don't get me wrong. Bob Gibson and certainly Ozzie Smith in the 80s, Lou Brock. But in terms of the guys that are playing right now, he's the guy. I mean, that's for our young fans, he is their Stan the Man. 
and it's just a shame that he has not been able to get back to St. Louis. And I, I do think the response would be really, really good. It'd be a special moment. I mean, it was a little different having him leave. And like you said, did and does and still does a lot of things for the city of St. Louis with his foundation. He'll never stop giving back to the people to. of the city. And, it, it, I mean, you're right. It was a little awkward at the beginning, but I think our fans are educated enough to understand free agency is not always perfect. They also know now that we've hit it over the head for years and years and years now that the team is so much better off with the plan that they executed and been in the playoffs, been to the World Series. I mean, everything has happened for a reason. And he should be able to come back and, and be cheered the way he deserves. I had a great conversation with him today, and, you know, he's just still the same old Albert. It's like old times having a chance to visit with him and very pleasant, very nice, asking about family and kids and how's life. Still has a home in St. Louis. And as you mentioned, his foundation still raising a lot of money, especially for kids with Down syndrome in St. Louis. He has a 10-year personal services contract with the Angels once his career is through. And a ground ball that's hit to short. Strong, om or, uh, strong arm and a nice play as Randall Gritchick is retired. Bottom of the eighth rolls in when we come back. Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Budweiser, this Bud's for you, and by your local Volkswagen dealer. Our good friend John Reynolds is with us here tonight. JR is from St. Louis as Mike Leake continues to deal here this evening. There's JR. John Reynolds hasn't done a lot tonight, hasn't done much over the years to help us, <laughs> but he's here. That's so, so nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> he just did. Uh, JR is the best. Oh, look at him. Look at <laughs> JR act like he's trying to figure out who's in the bullpen. Half the time we can't get him off the phone because he's trying to make bets. <laughs> Fly ball into left and a great attempt. And a diving catch by Hazel Baker as that ball gets away. Pennington will stop at second base, but you applaud the effort of Jeremy Hazel Baker. The ball kept running from him the whole time. It's one of those balls you think you're going to catch, and it just keeps tailing away from you. And you got to make the decision. It's by you already. Do you dive for it and take a chance, or either way, you're running down in the corner in the double. So. 
you worked with him a lot in spring training, and I remember one of the first games we did together, you said, this this guy's pretty good. He's got a chance. And here he is in the big leagues. He's made an impact. I think that he's one of those guys that just needs to figure out what he wants to do with his tools. Nope. Big and strong, he's fast, and sometimes maybe gets caught in between of being the fast guy and needs to take his chance of going out there and being the strong, big swinging home run hitter that can run. What would you advise him to do? Would you say that? Swing a little bit more for power? Use your speed? Look he, at Mike Trout. Yeah. You know, he goes out there and does what he needs to do as far as power and speed. Off the glove of Colton Wong. And that will be ruled a base hit for Escobar. Not an easy chance there for Colton. Tough play as balls hit. Looks like a hit right on the edge of the grass and the dirt. Now in all seriousness, our buddy JR had a medical procedure recently, pretty serious, and it's great to have him here in the booth. And he just told us that Tyler Lyons is getting loose. <laughs> and I was going to say earlier you were giving him the Jim Hayes treatment where you were <laughs> giving him the business without him being able to talk back and defend himself. Yeah, if Jim wants to uh, defend himself, we just cut his mic. <laughs> Here's Calhoun. And a fly ball lifted out to left field. Runner will tag up. That's Pennington. He'll score. And the Angels get on the board. It's now 8-1. As the crowd comes alive. I think that's just a little sarcastic cheer from the crowd here. Maybe, maybe just, just a little. little. Maybe just a little. So with your interview with Mike Trout, we're going to have to get that, too. I want to see that. Well, I'm sure that seeing how you come to the ballpark by noon some days, <laughs> and get your work done, you'll be around when I show up and I do whatever they ask me to do. Sure. So one out, one on. And a ball low and outside to Trout. Albert Pujols is on deck. Pitch count only at 97 for Mike Leake. Tyler Lyons was really good last time out. Catches the bottom of the strike zone, and Trout has had issues with this strike zone all night. I could see why on that pitch. Mm -hmm. Throw that sinker off the plate and try to run it back. You talk about changing eye levels. That's a good example right there. Low, previous pitch, then up. Yeah, sometimes with these good hitters, in and out is not enough. And if you keep throwing him the same pitch down in the zone, he's going to make an adjustment and go after that. So you got to give him something else to think about other than in and out. The 2-2. Two -two. Two pitch to Trout. Went with the breaking ball and struck him out. How about that? And to me, what I've been watching this game, as you see this last pitch, as I see his breaking ball has gotten a lot sharper. Yeah. And he's really throwing it as, a, as opposed to guiding it sometimes. And like I said, you get a little bit more comfortable when you get a lead, you get an opportunity to get that win under your belt mentally and then you can go out there and play the game and pitch how you normally do and you could just see his stuff's actually getting a little bit better as this game's gone on I think 
and you can tell by he's kind of letting it go a little bit more. Here's Albert Pujols, who is hitless tonight. He is one for 14 against his former team. There's no doubt Albert is headed to the Hall of Fame, and a lot of fans have asked me, well, what logo would be on that cap? It's up to the player. There's a suggestion as that flies into our booth. Gooby called it. Mark Gubas has said that there would be a ball that lands in our booth. Give me that ball. Yep. This does not look like a big a, league ball. <laughs> no, look at that thing. Here comes another one. He's over there talking about us, and we're over here talking about him. And he said today, there's a lot of balls that come flying up in the booth here because of the angle that we're at. And I told him, don't worry about it, as I am not going to try and catch a baseball coming off the bat that hard. Not without a glove. <laughs> now, <laughs> you called it. <laughs> there you, want you go. Jimmy to sign it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff right here. This yeah. is one of the best booths as far as being able to interact with the rest of the guys. Yeah. Everything's so close. I'd like that ball back, though, Mark. <laughs> yeah, give me that ball. There you go. Thank you. Can they open all the mics? <laughs> oh, right through Jerko and a hard hit ball. The throw will go into second base. JR, you want this ball? Maybe a play that Jed might think he should have made. But that ball is sinking right oh. there. It just disappeared. <laughs> That's an oops. Believe they gave that much deserved error. G-Man Choi is a rule five pickup. Before the foul ball landed in our booth, he's talking about the Hall of Fame. And it's like Tony La Russa had the choice to go with the White Sox, the A's. The Cardinals elected not to put a logo on his hat. There's a suggestion from the Hall of Fame. They suggest Albert Pools put the STL or the A on top of the cap, but ultimately it is up to the player. For those of you wondering. O2 pitch. This will be the final inning of work, more than likely, for Mike Leak. And what has to be a sense of relief for him. This game stays the way it is. As much as the camaraderie in the clubhouse. between all these guys is having so much fun and doing the things they do. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't give him a little beer shower. Yeah. Or some champagne or something for fun. First win. First Usually win. get that. We started the beer shower just for fun, but I think it really irritates the clubhouse guys right. when, you ruin, when you ruin their floor. Well, coming into tonight, see Mike Leak six starts only 13 runs of support but he's got eight tonight that also follows up your point about just trying to be perfect in tight games as he'll get the strikeout Choi thought that was high Molina knew it right away he started for the dugout nice work Mike Leak one run allowed
Mike Leak's night is through. Shane Robinson, by the way, takes over at center field, the former Cardinal. And this is our new pitcher, Corey Rasmus, the brother of Colby Rasmus, drafted by the Atlanta Braves in the first round back in 2006. He was traded to the Angels for Scott Downs back in 2013. And Brendan Ryan is back in the big leagues and at shortstop. We saw him a lot in spring training with Washington. There's Sugar Shane and there's the beard. It just it cannot be comfortable once it starts getting hot. <laughs> Here's Brendan Ryan, circles it, and he makes the play. Ah, oh, Jim Edmonds, your good buddy, Brendan Ryan. There he is. I'm curious, if you grew a beard, would your wife think that was a good idea? No. So I'm, the lead into that would be I asked um, Shane Robinson <laughs> about his and he said my wife hates it. Oh I bet. But he said once he grew it he just left it for a while. It is it's, it's Shane's is long and scraggly too. It's funny. It's got to be uncomfortable. Gets hot itchy. Always scratching it. Sugar Shane. One of the good guys in the game. Yes sir. And Moss fouls it back. Cardinals picked up a run in the first on a Matt Carpenter home run. Another run in the second, four in the fifth, two in the sixth, and they lead it eight to one. 13 hits tonight, four home runs. Into the shift, hits it to the second baseman. Can't come up with it. Giovatella, tough play off the bat of Brandon Moss. So one out and a runner at first. A little skip off the grass. You're not used to standing out there. No. It's actually probably a little wet. Right. Yep. yep. Now that the. Takes it like a man. Keeps his body in front of it like you're supposed to. More and more, you see infielders actually during BP when the coaches are hitting ground balls, you know, especially second baseman and shortstops, taking ground balls off the grass in shallow right. And that's something you never saw before, ever. But now it is a part of everyday life in the big leagues, the shift. The evolution of the game. Yeah. No balls, two strikes on Jerko. Some pretty good seats down there available for you. Going to run down there and check out a game close up. Right in the front row. Tell you what, it's been a long time since I've seen a stadium this empty. Probably a long time since you've seen a stadium at all. <laughs> well, yeah, for you. Other than St. Louis. But you think about this ballpark, I mean, this is a team that was drawing big numbers for a while. Big, big numbers. I used to get blown away playing in Missouri, playing in St. Louis. And huge, huge rain delay. And we'd come outside, and there'd still be 20,000 people standing right. in the stands. I'm like, I don't know if I could gut that out. But yeah, it was to up the to credit you. You'd of be, our fan base, you'd it's be amazing. Home. It was up to you. Yep. And you were the starting center fielder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we call this game and go. We got another 140. Ryan to second. Nice play. I'll call that an out. As Jerko rounds it to short. A little flip there by Brendan Ryan. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Cardinals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. I'm going to go back to your question about the beard. I'm not sure I could grow one. <laughs> 
I couldn't take it. So I know my wife wouldn't like it, but I'm not sure she has to worry. <laughs> she's she's safe. Yeah. Mine's safe because I can't take the growth. That's that'd be it right there. What Jeremy's got right there in his face. Yeah. That would be it for me as long as I could make it before it drive me crazy. Here's a 1-0 pitch. Two balls and no strikes. Hazel Baker is the only man in this lineup, at least this spot in the lineup, that has not reached base. A couple of strikeouts twice, flight out to left. And Jerko advance on the play to second on a wild pitch. Plaza tire service with the replay and a wild pitch. Cardinals have two more here in Anaheim and then it's off to Dodger Stadium. Turn them loose on 3 and 0. And that's ball four. And it brings in Ruben Tejada for the second time tonight. You know, be honest with you, Jimmy, I was a little worried that you'd even make it through this game. I thought I just would turn to my right by the seventh. Be year. gone. Yeah, you're on the highway going back home. See you tomorrow. No way, buddy. I'm in it. This is good stuff. I got concerned. <laughs> it's one of those times when you. Take a bathroom break in between <laughs> innings and you don't come back. Where'd he what, go? What happened to Jimmy? Still looking for the restroom. <laughs> there you go. You know, I don't like what you said earlier either. Matter of fact, I, I'm going to file an official complaint to Fox Sports Midwest. Hopefully, are you talking about me not protecting you on the foul ball exactly. situation? You said if it was a foul ball up here, you wouldn't catch it. I'm not even going to try to catch it is all I was saying. Tejada lines it to third. These guys have had trouble catching the ball on the field, let alone up here with no glove. Oh, great. Eight-time gold glover next to me, and he says, I'm done. I don't want to catch it. Thanks, Jimmy. are rooting for the St. Louis Blues. That includes the Missouri Air National Guard 157th Air Operations Group. They are deployed to the Middle East. They sent us this photo yesterday from their base 
The 157th is based at Jefferson Barracks in St. Louis. Next month will feature the 157th and their families, and this one's for you, our annual Cardinals telecast to the troops. That will be June 15th on Fox Sports Midwest and American Forces Network. It's always an extreme privilege to be able to do that every single year. Eric Fryer takes over behind the plate. Tyler Lyons is on the mound for St. Louis. And it's 8-1 to one Cardinals. C.J. Crone will lead it off. And the pitch is taken for a ball. Lyons came in in relief of Carlos Martinez the other day and was terrific in relief. This is our Chevy call to the pen. So it looks like, barring a disaster, Mike Leake gets his first win in a Cardinals uniform. He'll improve to one and three. The Cardinals then go to a game above the 500 mark. At 17 and 16, just the way you want to start a road trip. Get a guy you're counting on a win and pick up a team victory as well. I thought there were really good signs that Wainwright in his last start on Saturday turned the corner after a rough first inning. You get Wainwright along with Mike Leak going with Garcia who's been very good and Carlos Martinez. Now you now you start to get things going in the right direction. The pitching is definitely going to be the key. And talked to Adam a couple weeks ago and he said he was definitely getting close to feeling his normal self and like you said, kind of maybe turned the corner, and he kind of called it. You know, we said that he was feeling better. He was getting. He was really close to being himself, and get Mike League started, get comfortable, get a couple wins, turn some things around in a hurry. And I think another player that comes to mind too, when you're thinking about guys that you're counting on and wanted to see them back to the level that you know they can be at, is Randall Gritchick. Home run tonight. A two run shot. He had three RBIs in the game on Saturday. Popped up. And Colton Wong will make the catch. One away. And I think the other player that you're talking about would be Colton Wong. If you could get him going, get him relaxed, be the player that we know he can be, then things start to really click. I think you're always going to have guys struggling beginning of the year, slow starters, pitchers not ready coming out of spring training. Off of Lions, Wong charging, bare hands, and save at first. And they're going to check on Lions, who is waving off Mike Matheny and the medical team. I think that got a little bit of padding in the back. <laughs> What would that be, Hopefully. Jimmy? The, that that the, would be a lot of padding for me. <laughs> is that the back or is that the cap? Oh, you mean that padding? Yeah. I got you the now. The big round area <laughs> right below your waist. Let's go. There's, move it along, he's saying. There's Chris Conroy, who's been a longtime member, uh, member of the medical team for the Cardinals. So if you're going to get a line drive back at you that's the place to if get you're it. scoring at home that would be <laughs> <laughs> maybe the right cheek <laughs> right below the keister yep Giovanni Soto Moss will play behind the runner at first base strike one I always find it interesting too at the end of the night game when the crowd is lessened. You can hear them more. There's a few select fans that are cheering, let's go, Angels, and we can hear them distinctly here in the booth, all 10 of them. <laughs> a 
you probably could hear some of the insults thrown your way a little bit better too. I think I used to text you guys when I was watching at home after rain delays. You'd always have that one fan by the oh, yeah. microphone. Like, why don't they turn <laughs> that mic down down there by the field so you don't have to listen to this guy on TV? The 2-2 and a strikeout. Good breaking ball from Lyons. Really his signature pitch. We turn to tonight's Budweiser player of the game, and it's our starter for the Cardinals, Mike Leak. Eight innings, seven hits, one run, one walk, five strikeouts. Our Budweiser player of the game. The final hope for the Angels is Cliff Pennington. Oh, and to the count. That'll find the seats out of play. You know, the game was so out of reach by the seventh, we didn't even see the rally monkey. I think he went home too. Or did he not show up tonight? I think he was upset too and said, the heck with it. <laughs> oh, two pitch. Breaking ball doesn't get the call. Evens it up at two balls and two strikes. Jim Hayes, you'll have the post game reaction with Mike Leake and Mike Matheny, among others. He'll be in the Cardinals clubhouse as the Cardinals take game one with the final of eight to one. Nice work by Lyons in the back end. Well, you get that first win for him. Good offensive showing. Pretty good game, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. The four home runs. Cardinals put up eight runs. One of the top slugging teams in all of baseball. And run support tonight for Mike Leake, his first win as a Cardinal. And a relief for him. All smiles as it all started with Matt Carpenter. He had a couple of home runs. 8-1 the final. Post game show comes your way next.